Gig Gab 266 for Monday, July 27th, 2020. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in San Jose, California, it's Paul Kent. Yeah, I, I, people are probably going to be upset today, Paul, because they don't get to see us this time. Maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should. Consider- I don't think anybody's upset about not. Getting to see us. <laughs> Come on, let me have my moment. <laughs> but that was fun last week. Those yeah. were nice guys. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Good guys. I mean, I think cut from a similar cloth. They just kind of want to talk about the stuff that's going on, help some musicians think about things in different ways. Totally. I think it's cool. Totally. You know, um, I, I was thinking about sharing something with you. Okay. And I do, I have I some good tips to share later in this episode, uh, including some hardware tips, especially for in-ears people. I so love it. stay tuned on that, but let's, cool. let's, yeah, we'll put a, we'll put that on the back burner for a minute. Yeah. I was you know, about to say that, uh, there seems to be a, a sea change in perspective of I see more musicians speaking up um, about positions, about whether they should take gigs and mass mm. screen. So, but actually, the more relevant part to this, which is kind of a unit global truth here, you know, social media, it's hard to say you detect a sea change in anything. It's, it's what your feeds are sharing at you at totally. any particular moment, right? Yes. It's, it's, and, the and, and to globalize and assume that your that your worldview has been <laughs> ratified. No, all it's that's happened really that. is is Facebook has figured out what your worldview is, and now they show it to you so that you'll come yeah. back, or they yeah. show you people that are a hundred percent against it so that you'll engage. Right? Like yeah. that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, their their algorithms are really like, tweaked for that because they you know they make money from from ad views, and so the key is to keep people engaged and keep people yeah. on the site. So, yep. So that said, I saw, I'm not going to say that there's a sea change, but I definitely sure. saw um, a, a bump in uh, musicians being more direct and vocal um, about having their, about, well, one guy who's like really well-respected musician in my area, he just came out and said, listen, we're not going to play until it's absolutely safe. That you're not going to see us do anything that's sure. you know behind a wall or, or you know, or you can look around the corner and hear us and you know anything like you know, it's not safe. And he said it in a fairly diplomatic way. It was like I encourage other musicians in this area to, to understand that if you're doing something that congregates people, you're not helping. And it was actually pretty direct. And then I read a three. You know, the responses to it were really quite supportive, which I guess they would be right unless someone was really ready to pick a fight. Right. You know, they're, they're going to let it go. But um, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I think right now it feels to me like there's a wave of consciousness that this thing isn't going to end soon. And this, this inconvenience that has turned into, you know, frustration has a longer tail to it. And people are now starting to be like, well, what if it's a year before I can play? What if it's right. Right. And so I think people, Musicians are starting to conceptualize the severity of this in a different way, or at least at least musicians in my area that I follow. I'll, I'll, right? I'll yeah. It it, no. It, and and I think I think locale definitely has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, things are different in uh, on your side of the country than they are it here in you know my corner of the country. Although it doesn't mean that that like that that is a permanent truth, right? Like if we screw things up here we will go the other direction, you know, yeah. very quickly. And, and for the most part, people are pretty aware of that. Um, you know, like, I, and I've, I've been really transparent about not just what I'm doing, but w- like my thought process of how I, how I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it was, I needed to decide before I was presented with any opportunities, I needed to decide what, where I, where my lines were and where I was comfortable leaving the house. Cause otherwise I, I simply would have stayed in that re-entry anxiety stage and never have left. And so I was like, okay, well let's paint a, a different future, you know, or paint sometime in the future. Like, am I going to wait until it's a hundred percent safe? Well, no, there's no such thing as a hundred percent safe. So, okay. 
great. Like, but, but that, that, like that realization was really helpful for me that any, every gig has huge risks. You know, I'm driving an hour here, <clears throat> some, you know, drunk person could crash into me and knock me off the deck at the dairy field. Like there's all of these things. They aren't, you know, they're far less likely to happen than getting infected with, you know, a, 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 a you know, this disease, but there, there are risks, right? So hundred percent safe is, is doesn't exist. It never has. And that was yeah. kind of an important thing that it's never been a hundred percent safe. Okay. So what's it going to take? And it was more like, okay, well, I'm going to follow the scientists because that w makes sense to me. And it was, you know, aggregating them together. And I've explained this, I'm not going to go through it again because I've explained it a few times on the show, but, um, but you know, here, it population density is lower, I think, than it is in your area quite a bit. Um, the number of the infection density is way lower than it is in, in that area. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so it's like, okay, well, yeah, here we are. Like the state saying the state by way of their scientists and everything else is saying, you know, this stuff is okay. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, yeah, then it's okay. I mean, like, like here we go now is it normal here by no stretch at all right <laughs> you know everybody's wearing masks everybody's uh you know audience members are seated at least six feet from one another all of that stuff um and and when possible bands are even that far from each other you know on stage and, and we've been trying to do that too but testing is another big part of it. And we're all getting tested pretty regularly around here too. In fact, I just, hmm. just had another one this morning. So, uh, it's become my new hobby, Paul, to get, uh, to how many get my times have you been tested Four now? Yeah. Well, yep. How long till you get a result? Um, it depends on the test. The one I did this morning will hopefully be later this week. Uh, but there are a couple of rapid test facilities around me that I've utilized. I went to one, uh, on Thursday just to make sure that the, you know, the gig we had last weekend was safe. Cause we all, we all have the agreement with one another that everybody comes in with a test that you've had in the last week. And, and then between when you get your test taken and, and show up, you know, for the gig, you've been basically, you know, locked down and, and all of that. Mm. So, but you know, everybody's taking it seriously. And that, that's the, I think that's the key is, is, you know, figuring out a figuring out where your acceptable risk <laughs> is. And, and again, it's, it's going to be different from person to person, but also very different area to area. Um, you know, if we were in New Zealand with, uh, with David Shannon, we'd be having an even different conversation. Right. Sure. Uh, you know, so, um, I'm so yeah. talk to David today. You did? I'm going to this oh, afternoon. Cool. That's great. Just connect with him. You know, nice. See if I can learn anything more. Yeah. Yeah. Really, that's really good. sweet guy. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm obviously amazingly thankful to be in an area where, you know, these kinds of things can happen in the right ways. We're doing another one of those football field end zone gigs on, uh, on Thursday night. And so I'm, Ooh. I'm happy for that. Um, for sure, you know, because it's it's nice to be able to play. <laughs> it's and I and I get that it's a privilege, and uh, so we're doing. F you, man. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> no, I, I get it. Like, I, yeah, I, I get it. But it's you know, it's like I said, it's it's there's a lot of thought that goes into this. There's a lot of um, restrictions and rules and planning and and all of that. And then you know, everybody in the band getting tested and. Um, those tests are, it's, uh, having your brain tickled by that thing. It's, it's Not quite fun. something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've had that done now three times and the, the, it, the first time was certainly the worst in that, you know, you just don't know you what's, what's going to happen. You don't yeah. know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even the second and third times are like, yeah. Oh yeah. It, it really goes deep. Okay. <laughs> that's not pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's just, it, you know, I, I know what's coming and yet when I'm finished the, the, every time, including this morning, you know, my eyes are just like watering like crazy. It's yeah. just like your body's yeah. response. My daughter got tested this morning and, and her, her uh, thought process was, you know, punch, punch, punch. It was like the only thing she could think of was making sure she did not punch the poor guy that was administering this <laughs> test on her. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, well, there you go. Your body goes into this panic. It's, um, but it's okay. It's quick. It's, it's, I mean, we're making it sound terrible. It's, it's, it is a little bit terrible for a very little bit of time and then it's fine, you know? So, um, and it's the best thing we've got right now. 
Uh, mm. Right. I mean, you know, without a, a, an actual vaccine, without any sort of treatment or anything like that, tests are what we got. So that's what we do. And then, then we can, you know, be comfortable together on stage and, and go play a gig and make sure the audience is in mass. My wife, she came to see Hedwig on Saturday night and, um, I had, I did not know any of, of this story I'm about to share until long after I got home, but you know, they were in the, in the crowd and looked around and realized that only now the rule is in the theater, you wear your mask a hundred percent of the time. And, um, she's realized that maybe 30% of the people had their masks on. Uh, see, and, that, that's, and that's my point to all this. Yep. Like you congregate people, people are showing over and over again that they just will do what they want to do. And that's the reality. And that's why it doesn't work. That's why it's going to be a long freaking time before that, we get back to normal. And so she went and found the house manager and she knows this person. She's volunteered at the theater, you know, a, a bunch. And she went up to him and told him like, Mark, look, if Dave walks on stage and sees that he will, he will not stop walking and sit at his drum set. He's going to leave, mm, you, you know, her. like you have, you have a, <laughs> like a, you have a major problem and B it's going to be even ma more major when you don't have a show to put on, you, you know? And, and so he's a big guy. He's like, he's exactly the guy you'd wanted to bounce as a bouncer at any club. Cause he's like hyper intelligent and massive and mm -hmm. knows how to use his size and his ability to project to command people into doing things and keeping the situation calm. And, yeah. uh, Yep. And so he, he evidently, again, I, you know, heard all of this as a story from my wife, but wow. yeah, he went down and said, look, you all have to have your masks on and they do, they will police people during the show. Um, I, and I see that regularly. Like if somebody, you know, slips their mask down, they'll just come and like, no, no, no. And so it was fine. I mean, I, I saw no trouble during the show at all, but, um, which is good. Uh, Cause otherwise I wish she's right. I would have left. Mm. Like, you know, these are the rules we've all agreed yeah. to them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no you go. I was going to take. I was going to take us in a in a different direction. I, um, my, I, you know, I use my Ultimate Ears, my UE Eleven Pros, and mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that the there's the the cable for them, the pieces around the ear have like a plastic sheath around the cable right there with a piece of metal. It's almost like a paperclip in there that you can use to kind of fit the the cable to, to really snug around your ear and lock things in. And that plastic had broken, which meant that it like part of it was like sliding around. And then there was this piece of metal in there that now was going to cause like a real uh, like corner on the cable if it sat the wrong way. So, and it's the only cable of this type that I had. And so I thought, uh Oh, I gotta, I gotta fix this problem. So I immediately went online and ordered two cables from ultimate ears but they're way over in, in uh, LA. And so that was going to take like a week to get to me. And so I found on Amazon that they, you know, there's like these aftermarket, you know, cheap cables. I wouldn't necessarily rely on them long-term, but for in a pinch, I was able to get one here, you know, in two day prime shipping or whatever. Uh, and I'll put a link to the, 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 that in the show notes. Cause it's worth, if you're an ultimate ears user, it's worth spending 20 bucks to have like some sort of backup there. If, if you don't have a UE cable as your backup, but so that's, that's part A, like, that's great. 20 bucks and you're, you're good to go. But part B is, is the big part for me. I put these new ca this new cable on and it's, this is true with any of them. The Amazon one, as well as the, the actual ones that I finally got from, from ultimate. And it was like, I got a new set of ears, Paul, as a guitar player, I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know, but cables wear out and the sound changes dramatically. Um, I, it, it was like, I had all this low end that I didn't have before. There was this sparkle on the high end and, uh, and I mean, it changed everything. We, you know, we did like a little sound check and I had this in and it was just like, oh, I was just losing myself in the sound of how great it was. And my guess is, I know that they sounded this good when I got them. Um, but you know, gradually over time, the cable gets beat up and worn and, and starts, you know, applying more impedance to the signal because it's thin and it gets worn down and bent and you know, all of that stuff that you, I didn't notice it. You know, it's like I, I boiled the frog of my cable, but uh, <laughs> right. You know, like it, it took, it, it took a long time to get to where it was and it didn't like the cable had not broken. So I, it wasn't like I had to replace it, but I wanted to so that I wasn't in a pinch and man, I mean, just 
night and day. So my advice to anybody using in-ears of any brand or any kind, including universal fit in-ears, if they have a removable cable, if you're, you know, if you're playing relatively regularly, I'd say replace it once a year. Wow. Uh, yeah. Bucks. I mean, it's not, it's not a financial problem, but no, I would, and I would always have a spare around too, by the way. Um, but, uh, and all, it's not quite 20 bucks because from ultimate years, you'll wind up playing, paying, I think 40 for a cable from them, which the, the one I bought from Amazon doesn't have the nice stuff around the ears or, you know, any of that stuff. It was a comfortable cable and obviously it sounds fine, but, um, but you know, the, the ultimate one will cost you somewhere between 40 and 50 by the time you have it shipped to mm. you. Um, yeah, you know, they're proud of their stuff. Like you can't really blame them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I think if you send your ears in for service, if the cable isn't up to snuff, they, I, they ask them, but I think they might replace I, it. No, no I, they do. I've okay. had that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that can be part of your, what's the surface now? It's 150 bucks. I think to have them serviced or whatever, maybe it's a hundred. I forget. But, um, but that's it's also fine. worth it to have them cleaned and serviced and they'll replace any parts that are necessary, including evidently the cable. So highly recommend, um, you know, just like you would with your guitar. You probably wouldn't, I don't know, maybe you would use the same cable for years. I don't know. I'm not a guitar player, but um, yeah. yeah. So it makes a difference. No great surprise now that I say it out loud, but, uh, but it sure shocked me when I first heard things. I was like, what's going on here? This sounds amazing. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was a nice little treat. Yeah. Good. Hey, so, you know, I'm moving in a couple of weeks. So yeah. finally my move is going to happen. And um, I was thinking about how all things in life have changed. So as I, you know, wanted to get kind of connected in the local music community down there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, now you can't, right? I mean, there's not really a lot of great ways to to interact with musicians if there aren't any gigs or, you know, open public things. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I guess things are just put on hold. I guess, you know, everything is just stuck. I'm going to do videos from down there. And one of the things I hope to do is like do some location videos. So David Shannon has been great at this. Oh, you know, he goes right. and plays cool and he does a beautiful video and, you know, he talks about the location that he's at and, um, you know, I'm moving to a place where it's, it's really nice. And so I'll have a lot of scenic options for doing this. But, you know, I don't really know how I'm going to do too much networking. And certainly there's no gigs to, to try and get. So, um, you know, that'll all get slowed down. Talking about gear, um, David actually had a really interesting, for these location videos, he uses um, like a video lav mic, right? Yep, yep, yep. And the one that he likes, um, which is, I think it's an AKG. Okay. Um, it actually has a locking one eighth inch connector on the side. You know, those that had a little, yep. little ring that you kind of screw in order to connect it. Yep. It only really works with other, with other AKG. Cables. You know, like a, yeah. yeah. Well, or, or body packs or something like that. Right. 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 Sure. And so, um, you know, he uh, found two things. One is um, a third party company that sells a converter cable for that. Okay. So it's locking. And then he also found something that it is a small uh, device that basically prov provides the phantom power for this little lot. You know, it's basically mm. an adapter. Yeah, and yeah. The phantom power comes through the adapter. And so, so you put like a battery in the adapter or something to, to, to create that power or... No, I think what it, I think what it does is it down it downscales the power. You still have to you still have to kick phantom power from your source from your mixer. Okay, okay. Yep. But but this scales it for the right amount of phantom power for this for this oh, mic. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Oh, right? because so with the, the adapter you're no longer using the AKG unit or whatever. I got gotcha. you. Right. Okay. Yep. Right. Got it. And so um the nice thing about all this stuff is for these location videos, you actually, you know, can be pretty pretty untethered, right? I mean, technically your 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 lav mic is is tethered, but, yeah, but, but it's not like you're setting a microphone stand up. So if you're doing something that's a location shoot mm. and you just want it to appear like you're kicking back and singing, this is an interesting way to do it. And he gets great results. I mean he he does sweeten it. He does put it put it through a process. Of course. Uh, he, he does it mostly through Final Cut, but you can do it in Logic or you know any DAW as well. But um I'm gonna give that a try when I get down there. That's cool. Yeah. So like that's okay. So I'm I'm interested in this. When when you like once you get there and you get settled and things start to open up a little bit and you can, you know, there's, there's an opportunity to do something, whatever that something would be. I'm curious, like, what are you like, I, what, 
what do you want to do when you're down there? Do you want to start another band? Do you want to join a band? Like what, what's, what's step one, I guess would, would be. Yeah. Good. Well, step one is to get solo acoustic stuff booked. Mm. Control my destiny, yep. roll in, do my gig, get paid, you yep. know, I, and I think you can do that. And then, well, and that, it, you, know, it, you know, with, with things sort of slowly reopening, those are the kinds of gigs that will be more plentiful. I would think than, yeah. than I mean, they were available gigs. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it got shut down. Those were the ones that came back first. Right. So right. yeah, that'll be the thing. And, and again, I, I just think from the, with a, with a business hat on the nice thing about doing those gigs is that I personally will start to develop a network and a fan base. Yep. Right. Yep. And, you know, I think I'll have, you know, it's, it's about a three hour drive. It, it, I think people from up here will come down to see me if it's a nice place. And, you know, I, I think I can get a little bit of momentum starting to get built there. I don't know if I would do a band down there. I mean, I'm keeping the house rockers. I mean, we already have true 35, 40 gigs, you know, booked for next year. So I don't know how much time I'd have yep. for that. And I also booked uh, one of my favorite places up here, booked me for a year in uh, of gigs in, in 2021 so i already know the weekends i'm coming up to northern california to to play got it and then you know the other weekends i could book down there i don't know i mean it might it it, it really all depends on people at that point you know yeah. if you find people that you really like to play or you know that you want to hang out with or that you're musically compatible with that you know could change my mind for anything so totally i would even you know if it's the right people mm -hmm. in the right situation i would take you know just being the guitar player in a band gig if it was you know nice and you know, I didn't, and that's all I had to do. Yeah. Right. You know, those things are always weird to me. Right. You know, like even in the Mac world, all-star band, I have very little responsibility besides playing guitar and, you know, singing what I get asked to sing. Right. 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 And I, I've never actually asked you this, but I'm sure I am. A, I am a pain in your butt sometimes. Cause I, you know, you, you do more heavy lifting, even though you constantly remind everybody, it's all of us. You tend, you know, you threw the party, you're mixing the, you know, the, the, the band stuff. You tend to be the focal point of that stuff these days or, you know, for a long time. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm a soldier in a band, I'm fine to be a soldier. I mean, I'll speak up and give an opinion, that type of stuff. No. I don't feel any, I don't feel any need to, <laughs> to fight Holy Wars. Yeah, no, no, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we've never had Holy Wars. And, and you know, the all-star band right now with our, our you know, quarantine distant recording projects, certainly, I, yes, I've been the focal point of that, you know, mixing things and pulling it all together and, and trying to, you know, be the champion to keep things moving. But with the gigs that we did, I mean, I threw the party, but unless I also happened to be band leader that year, I really was just like the, like you said, I'm the drummer that sings whatever tunes the band leader tells me to sing. And you know, I'm, I'm the soldier. I'm, I'm good to no, go. I'm calling BS on you. You would, you would arrange the backline stuff and oh you know, yeah, you, I would, you, well, get, you get the band fed on the night of the gig. Of and, course. You know, yeah. But in terms didn't of like do every year. music choices, I would, I yes. would either be in them or out of them if I was the band leader. That's right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, my, my, I, I agree with you. Yes. You were, when you were just, a, when your role was about musically playing, you would definitely do that. But I just think a lot of the energy went through you, especially totally. as you started to own the party totally. and it was great. I mean, it, you know, you were great at it and, and it worked out really well. Yep. But my point being is that, you know, when I get down there, if it's the right situation, like good people with decent gigs, you know, and, and, you know, no drama and, you know, I can, I can walk in and just be a guitar player. I would actually be open to that. I mean, I'm not looking for something that's a hundred gigs a year. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, right. these kind of casual, you know, affiliations, it's kind of different. Like let me tell you about a story about, um, a trio, right. Okay. Um, that, you know, plays. Yeah. Um, and then two people of the trio also play. Right. So these are people that I know. Sure. Just two like, just like trio. monkey fist, right. Cause monkey fist is either three of us or two of us. Got it. So, and, but it's, it's, I think in monkey fist case, it's two of you when a third just can't make a gig, you really, you know, go out and, and solicit gigs as a duo. Is the, that right? As a trio. The, 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 the band is generally booked as a trio, except right. in two scenarios. One would be if, if, like you said, well, if, like, well, if I can't make it to a gig, if, this is what's beautiful about monkey fist is like, Assuming the gig is booked as a trio, I can show up or not. Now, I, I, I don't like to leave anybody hanging. You, you know, it's, I, I don't abuse this privilege that I have in this band, but I cannot be there. And as long as it's John and a guitar player, 
like they're good to go without me. Yeah. You know, I'm not yeah. really the drummer. I, I, I am the, the extra guy that sings harmonies and, and plays some percussion. Right. Yeah. So, but there are also monkey fist gigs that are booked solely as duos because the club only wants duos, you know, and sometimes we talk them into, well, the band's really better with three of us, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And so like Dave's not invited. Um, and that's okay. so two, two questions about that. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, as a matter of course, Monk, it's a trio, right? As a matter of, yeah, it is a trio. You try to book it as a trio. Correct. And then again, is there, you are cool with it if they say, hey, we, we do they even tell you we got it? It's a duo gig. We're, you know, we're not going to need you on this one, or do they just book yeah. it and go? You no, know, I mean, they book it and go. Like, it, it, it's not like they need to call me and say, look, you know, you know, Dave, we, we need to tell you something. You know, it's not, it's not that, but usually it comes up like, oh, yeah, you know, me and Jimmy are doing this, this gig over here. Yeah. Sorry, you know, it didn't work out. We can't, we couldn't get the third person. It's like, yeah, okay, fine, no problem. You know, um, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's, it, there's nothing hidden or anything. It's no, no, no. All, it's not about being hidden. Other. It's yeah. about whether there's the courtesy of like, like is if the situation was the duo could be any combination of two, right? Yep. Do, do all the people who might be the third person out have the same perspective or I guess yeah. it's hard. Every, everybody does. Quotes do. Yeah, no, no, no. Everybody does. Cause I've done, we've done a couple of monkey fist duo gigs where it's just me and Johnny D. Um, yep. and he's played guitar. I've played some guitar on those gigs and, and y you know, so yes, we've it, for sure. And, and everybody understands there's really four people involved in this duo or trio that is monkey fist. It's, it's Johnny D me, and then either Jimmy or Maddie uh, playing guitar and some gigs we've, we've actually done with all four and you know, that works out too. Cause everybody knows all yeah. the same songs. So yeah. 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 So this um, scenario I'm sharing with you is about a group that is a, a that they perform as a trio. Yep. But two of the people also have a duo. I got gotcha. you. Um, and there is, I wouldn't say underlying tension, but it comes up, right? Sure. Okay. Like a gig is offered, and if the duo takes it, you know, the trio the guy, the guy who makes it a trio, or the girl that makes it a trio, will will say, you know, it is was it possible that the trio could have gotten that gig as well? Got it. And, and the net net is that conversation creates consternation, mm. right? Yeah. And so, you know, the, what is the solve for that? Is the solve for that, that everyone should assume that musicians have to work and, you know, if someone takes a gig, that's the way it is. Or is the solve for that a good frank discussion that, um, that, um, you know, here's, we will always pitch the trio and if the duo happens, you know, that that's a possibility, but here's where our priority, and maybe that's the question. What's is it about priority? priorities? Yeah. 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 Where are people's priorities? Yeah. And, um, I think that's I the, guess, that's the way to solve it. That's, I mean, Monkey Fist evolved, Monkey Fist started as a duo. It was Johnny and Jimmy only. And then they were like, you know, we're doing these bigger gigs. Could you come and, and sing with us and maybe bring some congas? But it was mostly yeah. about the harmonies, you know, at that point. I was like, yeah, of course, I'd love to. And, but it, but it was only on the gigs to which I was invited initially. Right. And we're, we're rewinding 10 years or whatever, like the, you know, these yeah. things evolve. And then it became kind of a, oh, wait, wait, no, you're like, you're invited to every gig. You know that. Right. I'm like, oh no, I didn't know that. Cause I was the extra guy, you know, but yeah. now that we're having the conversation, sure. And, and then, you know, it, and then the sort of the next phase of the conversation was, you know, they would play five gigs in a month and, and I would be on two of them with them and they'd be like, yeah, well, you know, we're playing tomorrow night, but it was only a duo, but you know that I'm always trying to book us as a trio. I was like, yeah, but you know what? Either one is okay with me. Like you guys were a duo before I came in and mm. when it works, that's fine. And when it doesn't work, that's fine. And you know, it's, it was just like, that's just how it evolved. And, but it, but now it has turned into a, you know, we want it to be a trio and, and John does most of the booking for, for monkey fist. And so he, he has that power, right. You know, for lack of a better term to, to choose whether a yeah. gig is a duo or a trio and he prefers it as a trio. And so that's what he books. But if, if there's a gig that he prefers as a duo, perhaps logistically, perhaps financially, although that with, with us, that's not really a general, general concern that, you know, but we're, we're, it's a different thing, but, um, but you know, like if he, if there's a gig that he wants to be a duo, he's going to make it a duo, 
you know, and that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> and so. and there's no questioning and there's no discussion. And, you know, that's the, I guess the, the yeah. difference would be is, is like if there's different people booking, right? I mean, I so, book some monkey fist gigs and when I book them, I book them as a trio because I want to play them. <laughs> But would you book them? Would you book them as a duo and tell one of the other two guys uh, you, you won't you won't be needed for this? Um, How would that we, go over? We could. It would go over fine. Um, you know, Jimmy and Maddie are both used to not being on all the gigs. Um, they each have their own things going on, which is why we had to kind of have both of them because they can't always make a gig. So, so no, it wouldn't it wouldn't be an issue. It would just be like, yeah, Johnny and I are doing this gig. Okay, all right. Well, let me know when the next one is. You know, it'd be right. fine. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's, it's, it's all very transparent, I, I guess, in, in that band and, and no one is relying on it as their primary gig uh, is, is probably the right way to say it. We all appreciate the money. Don't, you know, I didn't mean to, to say that we didn't. Um, and we all certainly, you know, can use the money uh, most of the time. So, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's just, you know, we're, we're transparent about it and it, it yeah. seems to work out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So personalities, nice. right? I mean, I think that's yeah. a big part of it is, are we all just like, is everybody the same level of crazy? I, it is, <laughs> right, right. Like that's it. Is everybody the same level of crazy? And now we all understand each other. Okay. We're all jerks about this sometimes or, you know, we're not. Okay, fine. That's it. Interesting. I don't yeah, know. Cool. Good advice. Yeah. Um, speaking of the same, combining the last two conversations, the, the, the same level of crazy and also, you know, integrating and uh, into a band for this run of Hedwig, we've had a second guitar player and it's a guy I've played with before this guy, Dave Comtois is playing. And then Ken Gray is our, our, has been the kind of the primary guitar player. The first run of Hedwig we did, we had, uh, this guy, uh, Victor Tracy, uh, Carrillo Tracy, I think is how his name works backwards. Um, and he was great. Uh, he and Ken work things out ahead of time. Uh, Ken basically drives the bus on the show. Ken's done Hedwig many, many times. And so, um, you know, he, he's, he's the one that sort of leads the charge and then, and then they worked it out and bringing Dave Comtois in on this one, you know, it's like, Oh, when I heard he was playing, it was like, I mean, he's a great player. I've done, he's done a bunch of madhouses together with us and like, like totally trust him as a player, but it's like, uh Oh, what's that going to be like, you know? And so for the first rehearsal, I just didn't have him in my ears. I'm like, we got to get back on the road with this thing. We haven't done it in six months. Like, I'm just going to pay attention to Ken. We're going to do our thing. And, and then, you know, once that got comfortable, I started bringing, bringing Dave up in my ears and it was like, well, wait a minute, these guys are doing cool things together. And it works out because it worked out quickly. I think because a, they're like adults and pros and know how to talk to each other. But, they both are huge Keith Richards fans. Mm. And so like that, they, they've, I mean, they've spent their lives like studying the stones and just immersing themselves in the stones. And so they both understand what that means. And I really, you know, we've talked about it on the show for years that the stones paved the way for that sort of two guitar thing to work even when people don't necessarily have defined parts like that, that listening in the moment and making adjustments to, to, to better the song, not necessarily to make one guy shine or the other guy shine or whatever that is. And the two of them are doing some really cool things together. Um, it's, yeah, it's worked out, but it's, you know, it's I, like, I don't think it would have happened at this level this quickly if it weren't for them each having walked in the door with decades of, of, you know, uh, studying the stones and how they do things. So it's, it's, it's been fun. All right. Our sound checks are always fun because somebody will start playing some classic rock tune and we just like bash through it. And then it's like, all right, we're warmed up. They got the PA tune. Like we're good to go. Um, and, and there's been a lot more stones this time around than there has in the past. I miss this stuff so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. right. Like that, those are the parts where it's like, thank goodness. Like, you know, we're all, being the same level of crazy. Like everybody in this show is absolutely on deck and on board with a hundred percent. You have to be tested. And if not, you, you don't come in, you know, you are not here. And, um, and that, that was a problem for me last week. I mean, I would have been on the same page, but you know, I was waiting my, the testing place that I usually go was taking, usually taking like four days and I didn't get my test results from them back until last night. So that was 10 yeah. days. So that's why I went for the rapid test on Thursday. 
Um, and my results last night came back negative too. So I've, I have not yet had a positive test, which is obviously a very, very good thing. Um, but yeah, I went on Thursday to get the rapid test. I had to sweet talk my way into the rapid testing center because they didn't have any appointments left. But So f philosophically, to bring this all yeah. the way around to where we started today, yeah. I mean, the rapid tests are awesome. And, you know, they are a great, useful, functional thing. Totally. But in practicality, it's an incremental solve because literally what would happen if you did a rapid test and that means you can have two, 300 people in the theater and you walk up and the drummer tests positive that day, right? Right. You, you know, the, the, the issue is still getting our hands around this stuff, mm -hmm. right? The, the, you know, the, the incremental proofs and, and those types of things, you know, there's a big sale at a store and before they go to open the doors, you know, one of the employees tests positive, right? Right. Y you know, the economy will not get back until we have our hands around this stuff, really around this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and like I said, test tracing are, 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 are incremental parts of the pie, but you know, a, a national agreement, we have to get this as under control as it can be. Not, yeah. not, not detours by which we can live. That may come. I see. Someday. I don't think, I don't think these are detours. I, I think this is our path. I, I think contact tracing and testing are the path. I don't think that's the detour. Why can't why don't you just shut one just shut the whole fucking thing down for two months and and you know, as some doctors in the, at the CDC are saying, and see if we get what other countries have gotten. Why does this have to be our path? I'm not going to get into the politics of it because I frankly it just doesn't interest me. But looking at the science of it, tracing and testing have worked in so many places and they're working here when we implement them. Right. So like, that's the test. That's the path is, is exactly this because the reality is we don't currently have a vaccine, whether we ever will or not is a question. I, I would assume we probably would. The question then is how, you know, what's the efficacy? How does that all work? Et cetera, et cetera. So until then, the idea is let's know who has it and who they've been in touch with and quarantine them off. And, and that's, that's what, I mean, that's what's worked in a lot of places. Look at what, you know, look at what England did. Like, I mean, this is, this is how they got there is exactly that. And, and now that testing is becoming easier here and we've got more resources and all that, like that's, to, that's the key. That's it. All right. I, yeah. I promise not to derail our conversations this way. No, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's just fine. right there. But, yeah. you know. Yeah. Off we go. So. Yeah. Uh, so when is the um, the uh, outdoor gig for you? Thursday night. Nice. And, when, and are you done with your run of, of uh, Edwig? I, so they wound up extending the run. Um, I did not have availability this weekend for that. So my poor friend, George has to, uh, has to step into that. And I say poor friend, George, I mean, he'll have a blast doing it. He's a great drummer in, in many respects. He's a better drummer than me. Um, but this is not a show that I can hand someone a written out drum book and say, go. It's, you know, like telling someone, Hey, I need you to drop into a house rockers gig hmm. and know all of the cues that are going to happen on stage that might or might not happen on stage. And you need to react to them exactly the right way because the whole band is relying on it. Like that's, hmm. that, that's why I say poor George. <laughs> so I gave him this PDF that I have of the score that I sort of marked up a couple of years ago when we started doing this. And, uh, and it, it's, it, it's wrong. Like all of the things in it are wrong, but they remind me of the things that I'm supposed to do usually, although mostly I have it memorized now because it's just like a rock gig. And so I wrote George yeah. this like four page email as I, as I read through page by page of my PDF of notes, it's like, okay, here's what I mean by this. Here's what I mean by this. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to overdo it because what, what he really needs to be is a super confident rock drummer on that stage. Like that's what the band needs underneath them is to hold things together. And, and you he can't even do a, um, a, a pirated video of you, of you playing your parts that you could give to somebody else. There may or may not be a video that only George would ever be allowed to see. Sure. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> confirm nor deny. That is correct. Um, but <laughs> wouldn't that be helpful if that were to have existed? Yes, I would think so. I and think. that's actually the, uh, as, a bigger thing when I think about like for you, when you sub for my band. Yeah. 
sending you the audio for you to make a bunch of charts was was that the was that the most useful thing or would video have been better? Um, video probably would have been better. I mean, it it was fine, but there were there were a couple of things like you know I got out there a few days early and you and I well we did a rehearsal with Nick your keyboard player, the three of us. And then also you and I just like hung out for a couple of days. And yeah. that hangout time was actually the most valuable because, you know, we'd be driving in the car going to get like tacos or something. And you'd be like, yeah, well, remember, you know, that, that thing at the, at the end of uh, what is hip, the way we do that. I'm like, uh, mm, nope, this is the first time hearing <laughs> of it, Paul. What, what, what do you mean by that thing? Did I really do that to you? Oh, absolutely. It, it was like it, it, that in particular. Yes. But there were three or four other things where it was like, you you know, when we do this thing, it's like, I, it turns out I don't know, but now I'm learning. So keep talking and get way more specific, you know? <laughs> so I, I'll put a fine point on this because it's an interesting thing. We had a band meeting uh, last Friday night. Yeah. Uh, just to check in, see how the guys are doing. You know, I wanted to talk to them and let them know, yep, my move date is coming up. Yeah. But, you know, I'm reminding you guys, we are committed. In fact, we're so committed. We have 35 gigs booked for next year. Sure. And so, um, you know, that was part of the discussion. But actually, one of the things I raised with my band was, listen, the world is changing a thousand times over. Your priorities may change. May, they may have already changed or they may still change by the time we get to get back together. Yeah. All I'm asking is let's have a good conversation about giving plenty of time. And so in my mind, and we're also thinking of putting together a, like a corporate show, right? Like a, yep. like a more sellable corporate package. And this combined with the fact that I'm not here and we can't rehearse every week. We're going to rehearse like once a month, you know, moving forward. And if it's once a month next year, that means the first one will be just to brush, brush the rust off, you know, and then we have X amount of time, you know, once a month for the rest to do sure. new material or bring back additional old material. I think I shared with you that, you know, we've, we've decided that we're going to identify our our a our a show our a right. set list right? right and that's going to be the basic thing that i told everybody the expectation is stay ready right you know that type of thing i we shouldn't need a week of rehearsals to get our a show back together no that's right yeah right so um anyway this whole kind of like systematic view along with the fact that it would not surprise me it would break my heart but it would not surprise me if someone said listen i've got aging family I'm not going to do the number of gigs we have. So sure. you know, if you, right. And so if and there's nothing that, wrong with that. Like that's no. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. To wrong with that at all. You're right to encourage that. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Because nothing wrong with that. Yep. Well, I'll take it even one step further. I said, and guys, you know, my, my plan is January through May, I'm going to come up one weekend a month in the summertime. The plan is two weekends a month and a weekend is Wednesday through Sunday. So as many gigs okay. as I can do in a, in a long weekend, not Got just it. Friday, Saturday, yeah, yeah, Wednesday, sure. but, but, um, you know, and next year, because of all the things that have pushed from this year to next year, it's more is actually next summer is going to be a normal summer for us. Yeah. But philosophically, you know, if that once per month, if you're relying on this for income and you need to get involved with something else, let's have a conversation what that means. Does that mean you are prioritizing something else? Yes. And, and I, you know, I laid it out there and I said, Hey, you know, right now you guys are in the band, you know, call it first call or in the band or whatever that means. Right. If you can't make, you know, if your situation has changed and you can't make some other things, we'll come up with some fair way, you know, that the band can still be, you know, reasonably consistent, but, you know, thinking more systematically about the band, about having subs at every position, you know, it, it, when, when you, Frame it as a financial exercise yeah. more than a creative exercise. You think about it in a different way, in a, in a more business-like way. So, you know, having guys, you know, horns are are a pretty, a, a pretty easy to do. You know, they read. So all I need is guys who can read. They don't get the, the horn steps, but most of the real good guys, good players up here can step left and right and figure it out and, sure. you, know, and you know, try and be in it. It's much more painful if Nick's going to miss a gig, you know, he sings... Yeah. 40% of the, of the night. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's a different thing. Same thing. Like you said, with drummers, unless I go ahead and have a B team and a C team and, you know, we're ready to do that. So, you know, I, I have opened it up to that discussion of, of thinking about our show systematically, all starting with here's the A set list. This is our show. Yep. And, you know, with the amount of time we have, can we affect that A list? Is there news? We, we were, up to our waist and about 15 new songs when everything got shut down. Right? Sure. Do we finish those or do we start again? Or, yeah. Right. You know, whatever it may yeah, be. Yeah. Even those, even those will not be new songs. I mean, a lot of them we were trying to like 
add newer stuff to our oh, show. Yeah, yeah. They'll be another year older by the time we get there. Is there something better that we should put in more yeah. timely? So all those types of systematic, you know, process. And you know what? None of the guys indicated to me that they're going anywhere or, you know, that they're going to be ready when it's time. And that's, you know, that was very comforting. And I'm not naive that it couldn't change. Of the course. Can change hundred yeah. times. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the world, like, I, you know, you asked when's my, my acoustic gig outside. It's Thursday. But I fully realized that, like, <laughs> it's, there's like a the, lot like of. Like the Miami Marlins. <laughs> th- yeah, exactly. There's a lot of things that all it takes, you know, I it. it it, I'm sure, and it, at some level, this is true. I'm sure it sounds like I'm being very aggressive about things. It, given the area I'm in, believe it or not, I'm being pretty conservative about things in terms of what we're doing. And if there's- You've made that clear. Yeah, and if there's one thing that isn't right, I'm out. Like, I, for this gig today, now, the, the guys in the band don't know this, but I'll, I'll say it anyway, because um, I would tell them this. I asked, what's the deal? They want to sell tickets for this event. And I think they're already selling tickets for the thing. The first one they did for free, we did for free. It was, it was, you know, fine. We got everybody together. It was a really nice moment, but now they're like, Oh, look, you know, we could, people would pay for this, you know, whatever, five bucks ahead, 10 bucks ahead, whatever it is. Um, and we're going to get paid for the gig too. So I wanted to know what's the deal with tickets. Like how, and I want, I asked for two reasons. Number one, I, I don't believe we as the band get any comps and I'm okay. Okay. With that, you know, my family will pay if they want to come. I, but I also want to find out, like, how are they dealing with the logistics of this on site? Are people buying tickets in advance, a.k.a. contactless, socially distanced? Or are people buying tickets in person? And who's handling that? And does mm. that person think that all of this is fake? Because if that person thinks all of this is fake, A, I don't want my Great family question. being there. And B, yeah. that's one of my litmus tests, right? If I'm not comfortable having my family there... I don't play the gig. And so like, I want to know. And because we're playing this in an area of our state where the case numbers are low, everything's like, everything's good, but over there, mm, far less people seem to take this as seriously as, as Mm. I would want them to. And again, as long as they're not interacting with the people that want to take it seriously, fine. It's a football field. There's plenty of room for everybody, but not if there's a single point of entry, now I need to know what mm. rules are you putting in place? And so that could easily kill this gig right away. And I would, you know, would I be sad not to get to play? Of course, but that's not like, that doesn't factor into that decision. You know, it's, it's not like, well, we could just let it go this time. No, 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 no. That that's, that's the one place where it's like, if there's anything that's not a hundred percent right for me, I'm out. And I've been very upfront with everybody I play with about that. And they, they respect it. In fact, again, most people that I play with are pretty much on exactly the same page. So, yeah. So I'll, we'll, I'll let you know next week. Actually, I don't know. Th- I don't think I'll let, ne- let you know next week. I think we're off next week cause I'm away. So I'll have to let you know in two weeks. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I hope it all works out for all the, all the obvious reasons. So, yeah. So I hope everybody out there in, in uh, podcast land, we are cobbling these episodes together, doing our best without a plethora of gigs to kind of go through. <laughs> Keep the questions coming to us. You know, like last week we talked about a guy who was leaving a group and looking for another group. That was a good conversation. So I yeah. just want to encourage everybody out there, please send us whatever's on your mind. Even if you want to take issue with something I've said, <laughs> Dave is always, you know. D- Dave's not always right. Line, so. No, no. Uh, you, can, you can yell at uh, me for anyway. going and playing gigs. It's fine. Like I, like it, I actually appreciate those conversations because it forces me to reevaluate and make, you know, and I've throughout this, I've been very adamant about the one thing that would be bad for anyone. And that's me included is to get entrenched about any particular viewpoint because it keeps changing and there's always new data. And so I'm wide open. So yeah, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Let us know what you think. Talk to us, people. Yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. We love hearing from you. It's uh, it's one of our favorite things. So please, please, please me, please us. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> I can't help it. You know why I can't help it, Paul? Because you're always performing? That's what it is. I can't help it. <sighs> well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, I think. All right, man. Have a good one off. Later.